Welcome to Foundation Friday. The dedication and covenant of silent unity was signed on December 7, 1892 by Charles and Myrtle Film, founders of the Unity Movement. It was unlikely when they signed this covenant that they had any idea how far-reaching unity would be as it evolved into the church we know and love today. We invite you to join us as we explore and share some of the original ideas, teachings, and writings of the men and women who created the foundation of the Unity Church. Hi, thank you for joining us today for Foundation Friday. I think we have quite a treat for you today. I was perusing the archives on truthunity.net and I stumbled upon this article written by Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore. Now, this was transcribed from his notes by Patricia Holt on June 27, 2018. I haven't been able to find an exact date as to when this article may have been published, but it might have been published in the Occult Review in January 1926. <clears throat> it's not real clear because I guess that magazine has been lost, but Charles Fillmore kept notes. So let's explore what is life. We always have been more or less in doubt about the character of the soul. Science is busy with its work of research in that line. We always have supposed that our souls were spirit, but they are not. Science says that the soul and the body are but two poles of the related physical forces. This theory of the soul was printed in an article in the U New York Times by Professor Henri of France. He says, and I'm going to read from Professor Henri's article, the founders of religions were ahead of the scientists. They reached the same conclusions instinctively that we have at last reached slowly, painfully, by steps of infinite study and precision. None of us ever dies, says this professor. The electrical radiation, call it personality, individual characteristics, soul, if you like, or biological vibration, goes on and on. Set free by death, it seeks another envelope because on, only so can it establish its equilibrium. He goes on. All our souls have been used before. They will be used again. That was once a religious doctrine, and now it is an established scientific fact. But first, let us find out what the soul is. The first thing I set myself to solve was, what is life and why? That has been the most pressing question in the world, and it has never been answered. I have succeeded in answering those questions. Life is the formula by which equilibrium is established between many masses, many emanations of different qualities, degrees, reactions. There is a tendency to establish equilibrium between the absorption of energy and the emanation of energy from all three kinds of vibrators, biological, electrical, gravitic. Life offered the best, the only solution for this tendency towards establishing equilibrium, life therefore, was a profound necessity to the scientific universe. <clears throat> and now we're back to Charles Fillmore. He says, 
Here, science is proving that life is not only a profound necessity, but it is the eminent underlying principle in all existence. We go a step further and say that life is God and that without life, we would have no being. This brings us right back to continuous life or everlasting life, the great objective of Christianity. Professor Henri has found through mathemat mathematical calculation that the soul, the emanating mind in us, must have a medium through which it can attain its equilibrium, and that medium is substance. Now that we are brought face to face with an omnipresent life principle, we cease to theorize of life after death and an imaginary heaven or hell. Life being continuous, we must work on our problems right here and right now. According to Professor Henri, when a man seems to die, the soul, the mind, does not die with the body, but it loses its equilibrium, its balance, and must of necessity reincarnate again. Where it can most, where can it most easily find the equilibrium? On earth, where it has been before. Consequently, the soul plans and eventually forms another body. Thus, science is proving the necessity of reincarnation in maintaining the equilibrium between soul and body. Jesus Christ taught the the necessity of continuous living. He did not promise his followers a heaven in the skies. His prayer was, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. From Matthew 6.10. Now, modern science is telling us that in earth, there is a constant flow of light life and heat, that the substance itself is merely a mode of motion in universal ether. Science also tells us that when we learn how to control these elements of the ether, we shall make right here in the earth every condition that we have imagined to exist in heaven. Unity teaches man the law by which Jesus controlled the elements of ether, and that all who enter the same plane of consciousness on which Jesus lived, the place which he promised, will be able to demonstrate as he demonstrated. John 14.2 this is our goal, and we are banded together in his name to gain it. So I hope you enjoyed that article. The thing I found most interesting about this article is for the first time that I found, we have Charles Fillmore addressing straightforward without pulling any punches reincarnation the reincarnation of the soul, even the reincarnation of the soul bound to earth. It's been my experience that unity itself as a religion tends to shy away from expressing an opinion on reincarnation, but Charles Fillmore himself did address it, and that's what he had to say. So now we want to know what you have to say. Please tell us in the comments what your opinions are. We would love to hear from you. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Namaste. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook. Search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon.
Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.